In this video, we are going to learn how to graph lines. We've already been graphing lines by using a table of values and by using x and y intercepts. This lesson is going to show you some shortcuts for graphing lines just based on the equation. We're going to break down the lines into three different categories, diagonal lines, horizontal lines, and vertical lines. We'll start with diagonal lines because most of the lines you'll deal with will be diagonal. There are three different forms of an equation for a diagonal line. The first and probably most common is slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form you may recognize as y equals mx plus c. In this equation, m stands for the slope, 0b is your y-intercept, and then x and y just represent ordered pairs that are on your line. So if you were to go back and make a table of values, the x and the y together would represent all of the different ordered pairs on your line. Point slope form looks a little bit different. It's y minus y1 equals m, and then parenthesis x minus x1. The reason this is called point slope form is because the equation literally gives you a point, which is x1, y1, and the slope, which is m. The third form of the equation is standard form. Standard form is capital AX plus capital BY equals capital C. This one really is probably the least useful because from it we don't know the slope, we don't know the y-intercept, and we don't know a point on the graph. This form is helpful though if we were trying to solve to find the intercepts. If you think back to some of the problems we worked, if they were in this form, it was a little bit easier. When you look at this equation, the a, the b, and the c are just coefficients. So you're not really going to be doing anything with those. Those are just going to be regular numbers. Now, horizontal lines are a little bit different than diagonal lines. We all know that horizontal lines have a zero slope. Um, let's just draw a picture of a horizontal line so that we can refer to it. Um, if you draw your axes, and then just somewhere on there, put a horizontal line, you'll notice that all of your x-coordinates are the same. And so for a horizontal line, I'm sorry, all of your y-coordinates are the same. For a horizontal line, the equation is going to be y equals b. For a vertical line, we have a line that has an undefined slope. We know that this line is going to be straight up and down. So again, if you go ahead and draw your axes, and then draw a vertical line in there, this is the line where you notice all your x-coordinates are going to be the same. So we use the equation x equals a. Okay, so why don't you um, take a color here, and I want you just to box all of the different forms of the equation that we're going to be using today. So put a box around slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and then put a box around y equals b and x equals a. These are the three types of equations that we need to be familiar with in order to graph the line. When we graph, we have a couple steps. Um, step number one is to solve for y. Sometimes this will be done for you. If it is not, you'll have to go through this process. On today's work, we'll actually not be solving for y, but in the next couple of days, you'll be learning how to do that. Once you have y by itself, that's slope-intercept form. So you should be able to pick out the b from the equation. So step number two is to plot the y-intercept, which is the coordinate 0b. After you have that point, you are going to start at the y-intercept, and you're just going to count the slope. Remember that slope is just rise over run. So you're always going to go up or down first, and then move right or left. After you've plotted your y-intercept and plotted your slope, um, you should make sure that you have about five points. So you're going to go up and over, up and over, up and over until you've graphed five nice points on your, your coordinate plane. Then our job is to connect those points using a straight edge, extend the line through the graph, and then put arrows on the ends to show that the line goes on forever. So let's put this to work here. Our first example, you'll notice that your equation is given in the slope-intercept form. 
So right from this equation, we can read off the slope and we can read off the y-intercept. The slope is the number in front of the x. So our slope is 2 thirds. The 0 b, the b comes from the number that's being added to the x at the end. So our y-intercept is 3, but we write that as an ordered pair, 0, 3. To graph this line, I plot the y-intercept. So I'm going to put 0, 3 on the graph. Make sure that your y-intercept goes on your y-axis. You should always be starting on the, the vertical axis here. From the point 0, 3, we are going to count the slope. Now, since the slope is 2 thirds, we have a rise of 2. So I'm going to go up 2. And then I'm going to go to the right, 3. And we'll just do the bubbles here on the first one. You can continue to do that if you want. Now you're going to go up 2 and over 3 again. We want to get five points, so I'm going to go up two again and over three again. But now you'll notice, to get my fifth point, if I try to go up and to the right, I'm out of room. So I'm going to go all the way back to the y-intercept, and now we'll do the bubbles here again. And reversing this process, instead of going up and to the right, I can do the exact opposite. I can go down and to the left. And I'm still going to be following that pattern. In fact, you could continue doing that if you wanted to, down into the left, down into the left. You can really graph as many points as you want. Now the next step is to grab your straight edge. And of course, on the smart board, we really can't do that. So um, don't do as we do. Make sure you use your straight edge. And then you need to connect all these points to make a line. Make sure your line extends all the way through your graph. And then put arrows on the ends. Here's another example, y equals x minus 1. The first job is to figure out what the slope is, because again, this equation is written in slope-intercept form. Remember that slope is the number in front of the x. And some of you may think, well, there isn't a number there. But remember, we have that invisible 1. So always put that in there. So our slope is just 1. And some of you may not like that, so make it a fraction. You can always put a 1 under any whole number, so it's just 1 over 1. Our y-intercept is going to be the number that's added or subtracted after the x. So in this case, it's a negative 1, so our y-intercept is 0, negative 1. To graph this, you plot your y-intercept, so 0, negative 1. From that point, we're going to go up 1, right 1. And just continue to do that, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. If you wanted to reverse it, go back to your y-intercept. Instead of going up and to the right, go down and to the left. After you have this, Connect your points, make sure your line extends all the way through your graph, and then put your arrows on the ends. All right, our third example here. You may recognize it's not in slope-intercept form. Y is not by itself. Um, this is actually a vertical line. If you go back to the very first slide, you'll notice that the vertical line equation is x equals a. So what this means is that all of our x-coordinates are at negative 2. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. So we don't pick the slope off of the equation. You just have to know that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Now, if you think about the y-intercept, um, let's just plot a couple points here where x is negative 2. So if you go over to the x-axis, you could plot the x-intercept at negative 2. And then we know it's a vertical line, so we're just going to go straight up and down from there. So actually, I think we'll graph the line first before we think about the y-intercept. So connect all these points here. Draw your vertical line in. And you'll notice that this vertical line is actually parallel to the y-axis. It's never going to actually cross the y-axis. So in this case, um, the, we don't have a y-intercept. So you would just write none next to the y-intercept. Our last example is also a different type of equation. Um, this would fall into the category of a horizontal line, where the equation is y equals b. We know that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. We can fill that in right away. And again, I think to get the y-intercept, let's actually start graphing the line here and see where it crosses. So when you see y equals 3, that means every single y-coordinate is 3. So if you go up to um, the y-axis, for example, and you just plot a 3 there, and then you can just move over. We know that every single point is going to have a y-coordinate of 3, so if you just start putting a couple points in here, and then connect your line, you'll see that, that we have that horizontal line. And in this case, we can also see that the b value is 3. 
which makes sense because if the original equation was y equals b, then whatever y is equal to would give us our b value.